Bundy's Garage, Bundy here. Today we're working on an Infinity Q60 2016. This will actually cover Q50, Q60, Q70, Q70L, QX50, QX60, and the QX70 from model years 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017. We'll be doing the front brakes on it. So first thing you wanna do is go ahead and loosen up your front lug nuts. There's five lug nuts, they're 21 millimeter. Socket right there, I have a half inch breaker bar that'll break these off with. Righty tighty lefty loosey, you want to do this before you lift the vehicle up. There's one. We have all five lug nuts loosened up. Next thing you want to do, we'll go back here, right here, below the fender, right behind the wheel. You'll have a lift point to lift the uh, vehicle up on. Bring our floor jack. So right back here is the lifting point. I'm going to show that to you real quick. The uh, front wheel. If you come right back here, you have this lower plastic fascia board right here. Running board, if you want to call it that. Do not lift the vehicle up from there. I repeat, do not lift the vehicle up from there. If you go in a little bit further, you can see right here where my finger is. That's the lifting point you want to lift the vehicle up on. Do not lift it up on this plastic or you'll break this plastic and possibly crush the door. Lift it up right here. On most unibody cars, you have this seam this weld, and they put two body part panels together. That's the only spot you want to lift the vehicle up from. So as you can see, the wheel is off the ground. Come back in here, take all the lug nuts off. When we tighten this back down, we'll type it down to 80 foot pounds with a torque wrench. Going into star patterns, so I mean a star, this would be one, two, three, four, five. That's your star pattern when you tighten the wheels back down. Brake jobs are pretty simple, not very hard to do at all. Right here you have your brake pad, it's your brake caliper, your brake caliper your brake caliper bracket, this is your rotor. You have two options when it comes to the rotors. You can either take the rotor and have it resurfaced, also known as having it turned. You, ha you have it turned, they take it to a machine called a lathe, the brake lathe, and they actually cut a new groove into the rotor. Your second option is to have brand new rotors put on. It's more economically viable to have a brake rotor turned than it is to have new rotors purchased. Also another thing to consider, here on the left is an old unsurfaced rotor. Here on the right is the same exact rotor but resurfaced. So when they go in there they cut down any uh, any imperfections or waves in the metal. So if you think about it, after many many heat, heat cycles with the brake pad wearing down on the rotor, because they're stopping a 3,000 pound vehicle, you get waves in the metal. And if you've ever put your foot on the brake, if you've ever felt your brake, pe brake pedal uh, pulsate when you're braking, that's the wave you're feeling inside the rotor. To get rid of that wave, they go in there, they cut a new surface onto a, ro onto a rotor. These rotors heat up <clears throat> multiple times, thousands of multiple times during, a, during the life of a, of a rotor, if you want to call it that. So this rotor has already seen hot and cold cycles. It's been seasoned. So I think you're, you're better off getting a rotor turned than buying new rotors because a, a seasoned rotor has already seen the heat cycles and probably isn't gonna fluctuate that much as opposed to a brand new one. Cause I've seen brand new rotors after 300 miles already have a pulsating in the brake, in the brake pedal. You can have rotors turned at most major automotive stores. Just call before you bring it there see how long it'll take because your vehicle will be inoperable as long as they're turning the rotors. As far as saving money, save more money having your rotors turned than buying new ones. Best practice is to have your rotors turned than to leave them like this when you're doing a brake, brake job. All right, well, there's my uh, in-depth discussion, my theological discussion on brake rotors. So right here, you have caliper bolts, brake caliper bolts. One here, one here as well. 14 millimeter, righty tighty lefty loosey gets, gets these out. 
once you get these loose right inside here you have a pin that goes into the bracket for the brake caliper it actually this helps the brake caliper slide so you actually need to go in there and grease this grease this section up i'll show you how to do that right now so right here putting the wrench on the caliper bolt knock it open with my hand that gets it loose that way we'll look at the caliper out so there's one of them So I took the brake caliper off and right here, you, this is the brake pad. Here's the other brake pad, outer one, inner one. So right here you have these brake pad pins. These pins actually push out on the brake pads so you don't get that squeaking, uh, you know, binding noise that you sometimes experience. Very neat design. So you just pull this pin off straight up and out. The pins are exactly the same. You pull that one out, exactly the same. Leaves, it relieves the tension on there. Then you pull the brake pit, the brake pad, straight out towards you. There's one of them. Here's the second one. Now that you have the brake pads off. If you want to change the rotor out, which I'm actually not going to do, I know I gave that whole speech about changing out your rotor and getting it resurfaced or replacing it with new ones. This vehicle doesn't have that many miles on here, and I wanted to show you guys more of how to do this and actually doing it, so I apologize. But this rotor is actually already free. Unlike a Honda or a Toyota, you don't have a pin or a screw in here that needs to be taken out before you can actually get the rotor free. So if I grab this rotor, you can tell that it's already free. The only thing that's holding up is this brake caliper bracket. If this was stuck on here a little bit, all you'd have to do is take a hammer, take a ball peen hammer, tap it inside here, to get the rotor free but to get this bracket off you have two 22 millimeter bolts on the back side let me take you back there to show you real quick one of the brake caliper bracket bolts is here the other one is here 22 millimeter gets these things off it's huge you want to torque these things down when you put them back on to about 100 foot pounds okay you see the other one right there right in here are the slides for the brake pads. The brake pads actually slide in the, right in here, okay? So you can see one's right there. This brake pad actually slides back and forth on this guide. So what you wanna do is get some brake cleaner, clean that up, and then put some uh, Napa Silla Glide, which I'll show you here in a second, and coat here, here, and on the back side as well. And you also wanna coat, so here's the brake caliper pin. This pin actually comes out. You have one on top and one on bottom. You actually want to put Silla Glide on this pin as well, because this helps the caliper slide back and forth when the brake when the brake pads engage and release. So let me show that to you right now. You have O'Reilly brake parts cleaner. Spray right there. Spray on top. Take a rag, clean the slide out. You can see all the grease and muck coming out already. See how much shinier that looks already? Do the same on the top. And we'll do it on the back side as well. Here's one of your slides right here. and then shoot it on top. Right above this, the one I'm working on here. A little dab will do you on this stuff. Napa Silly Glide, lubricating, lubricating compound, non-melting, non-freezing, non-gumming, weatherproofing for brake parts, prevents pad squeal. So you just take a little bit on your finger, just a little bit, see, just a little bit like that. And you rub it coming, I'll start at the very back and come this way because I do not want this to get on the rotor or the surface of the brake pads, the friction material on the brake pads. Same with on top. 
go ahead coat this one just a little bit I'll go on the back side here sorry you can't see it but I'm just repeating the step on the back side on the bottom and now on the top okay and you take your guide pins you pull those out you clean the old grease off you apply the new grease directly onto the pin you spread it around with your finger and you repeat this for the for the pin on the bottom as well a lot of times while you see uneven brake cap brake pad wear is because someone didn't remove the old grease and put new grease on the uh, slide pins okay both the top and the bottom are done so we have both slide pins caliper slide pins greased up we have the section where the brake pads actually move back and forth we have those greased up as well we'll go ahead and put in the brake pads and one thing you need to do before you put the caliper back into place is you need to push the caliper piston back in the new pads are going to have more meat than the old ones more brake pad material than the old ones so you actually need to push this piston back into place you can do that with a c-clamp they make special tools for them as well i've never had one of those special tools my dad always taught me to use a c-clamp so i've been doing that for the last what 35 years with no problems so you want to get your old brake pad get your old brake pad set it into place Open up your C-clamp, bring your C-clamp into place. When you do this, it's a good idea to go ahead and open up the brake fluid reservoir. Some fluid might come out. If it does, you can just wash it off with water. Water eats brake fluid, but you're just going to slowly push the piston back into place. Okay? Once you get back in the vehicle, make sure you press the brake pedal five to ten times before starting the vehicle so that the piston can come out and make contact with your new brake pads. Otherwise, you'll fire up your car, you'll go to drive away, and you're not gonna have any brakes for the first three or four pumps you put on the, onto the brake, onto the brake pedal. Okay, so that brake, brake caliper piston is pushed all the way back. Go ahead, get your C-clamp out of the way, get the old brake pad out of the way. That's ready to go. Let's get our brake pads ready to go. Let's bring back in your brake pad. There's one, the outer one. Bring in the inner one here. Excuse my arm. All right. Now we got to bring in these brake pad pins back into place. When they're faced up, there's a hole here, a hole here, same on top. I like that design, that's a pretty cool design. Push keeps the brake pads from squealing and keeps them keeps them pushed out correctly. I might make it hard to put the brake caliper back in, but hey, it's a neat design. Okay, there's the bottom. We're working on the top. There's the top. We grab our caliper, bring that into place. All in one swift move. Bring our bolts back in. Start these by hand. You, you might need to move the caliper up or down to get them to line up correctly. So I had to have the slide pin in the correct spot. It actually has a flat surface on both sides and that has to line up with the caliper correctly right here where my finger is. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know it's kind of low light here. But yeah, right here, the slide pin has two notches in it. You'll see when you get in there. And it has to line up with the caliper correctly. Righty tighty lefty loosey on these. Once I get these, I always start these by hand. Once I get it started by hand, just go ahead in here, with my wrench, snug them up. They're fairly easy to take off, so I'm just gonna snug it up by hand. Same with here on the bottom. Check that one, double check the top one, good. Double check the bottom one, that's good as well. 
Make sure all my hardware's in. Brake pads are in place. So that's how you do a front brake job on an Infinity. So I'll bring in the front wheel now. I'm not gonna show you the other side. It's actually done on the driver's side. I won't show you the passenger side because it's exactly the same. And I'm not gonna bore you with that and I'm not gonna offend your intelligence by showing the other side. Next thing we'll do is we'll bring in the wheel and tire and the rim. Tighten the lug nuts down to 80 foot pounds on a star pattern. Remember to press your brake pedal five to 10 times before you drive away. And then also check your reservoir, your brake reservoir cap. Make sure it's fuller, that it's not overflowing. If some brake fluid, res brake fluid came out, when you push the uh, caliper piston back in, go ahead, remove some brake fluid out of the reservoir to, to get it to the, uh, to the spot where you need it, the mark on the side of the uh, reservoir bottle. And then use some water, like a hose. Take your car out to the street, hose the, uh, hose the brake fluid reservoir bottle down or uh, pour a gallon of water over it. Because uh, water eats brake fluid, and that should take out that should take care of all the uh, residual brake fluid that might have come out of the uh, brake reservoir. Brake reservoir. Yeah, I can talk today. Questions, comments, concerns. Actually, you know what? Let's start it off this way. If you found any of my videos helpful, please consider subscribing to Bunny's Garage on YouTube. Questions, comments, concerns. You can always reach out to me at Bunny's Garage at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Bundy's Garage and like always I'll keep them moving for you oh yeah key thing to remember is when you do these start the bottom one first and it'll make the rest of the lug nuts really simple to get back on <laughs>